All right, I'm so excited to be here with Tad Hargrave. Um, those of you who have been following me for a while, you probably have heard me mention his name and his website, Marketing for Hippies, in various you know videos that I do. Um, really believe in Tad's work, and he's been serving um, people who are you know fellow heart-based entrepreneurs, um, service providers for uh, for many years. Um, and in fact, uh, some of my clients and students have learned a lot from, from Tad. Uh, I, when I, whenever I bring him in to my uh, client program and have him do like some coaching with my clients, they just have you know, amazing aha moments. Uh, so Tad, it's, it's great, to, great to have you here again. Thanks for, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, thanks, it's good to be here. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The thing I talk about the most is niching. That's the yes. most common. Yes. And then, you know, point of view marketing has been pretty substantial. But yeah. something I've just gotten into that I got from a colleague of mine, Tom Pollan, is this whole, uh, I'm just really thinking more deeply now about the offers themselves. You know, what is the criteria of a good offer? How do you, how do you know if, it, if it's going to hit or not? And the kind of the internal and external sides of the offer. Yeah. So that, that's the thing I would love to dig into today. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, just a little bit more uh, background. Uh, you and I have known each other since, I'm going to say something like 2010 or yeah, 2011. I think so. Something like that. So, um, you know, when I say, when I say Tad's a friend, you know, a lot of people introduce uh, various sort of interviews like, oh, my good friend, so-and-so. It's like, well, I've, I've, known, I've known that person for for two weeks over email, <laughs> my good friend. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, Tad and I go way back. Um, <clears throat> yes, so let's talk about, so so first of all, just for to set context, mm -hmm. what is an offer? <laughs> okay. So those, so people can know what we're talking about. Well, I think of the offer is, you know, we, we have whatever product or service we're selling. And the offer is, I suppose, the way it's packaged together, put together, with a price tag on it. Um, so if you go to a pottery shop, you know, you might buy just a single plate, you might buy a whole set. Uh, and each of those would be a distinct offer. And if you're a life coach, maybe you, your offer might be a, a discovery call. Maybe it might be a weekend workshop that you lead. Maybe it might be a free call once a month. Maybe it might be a package, a year long package. Um, so it's kind of whatever it is that you have a price tag on that you're wanting to share with the marketplace. Interesting. Uh, so you know. even if it's a free thing. Yeah, um, I think yeah, so. It's a, because, well, and, and that's, that's really interesting because uh, if, if an offer is really well aligned with one's audience, then there's a large number of them who sign up for it at whatever the price is of that offer, right? Yeah, and it's it's a mistake. People think, oh, but it's free. Like, I offer a free call on my website. Why does nobody book? Imagining that there's no risk. Imagining that they haven't seen that offer a million times, and imagining that they don't know that it's a sales call. So it's it's um, even when there's no. Pr in fact, sometimes when it's free, people stay away from it because let's say an intro workshop. People think, oh, it's free. Therefore, it must be just a pitch. That's how he's getting away with doing it for free is he's, he's uh, selling something really hard. So it's still an offer. One still has to make the case, even if it's free, uh, that it's worth their time, that it's worth the risk of uh, you know, being bombarded by a sales pitch from the front of the room. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and the opportunity cost of like, well, guys, there's oh, man. a million free things today. So it's huge. Why, why yours? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone just, you know, look at your, your desktop and see how littered it is with all the PDFs you intended to read. And maybe that you bought and you spent money on. So it's, yeah, the opportunity cost is huge. And I think that's more and more people are having to discern. You know, I got this from a guy in Seattle years ago, Dominic Canterbury. And he's, he talked about the three things that need to be established in any offer. It's the relevance, credibility, and value as a kind of shorthand. And so it has to be relevant, like this is useful for me in some way, helps me with my problem. But number two, it has to be credible, they have to trust it. And third, there has to be value in it. You know, you've got to have all three. And if you're missing any one of them, they don't, 
it doesn't work anymore. And so people will think about, oh, yeah, I've got my niche and I've got my point of view. And then somebody's like, oh, I'd love to work with you. Uh, what would that look like? Well, I mean, it could just be anything, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, whatever you want. I mean, we can just kind of freestyle. And it, it leaves people very um, groundless. And people spend all this time, they, they'll work on their sales copy. They'll work on their Facebook ads and, they'll, you know, they'll do everything. But then when you look at the offer itself, the offer isn't that good. And there are certain metrics you can use uh, quantitative, qualitative, to look at your offer and make it better. And you can see where it's strong, where it's weak, and evaluate it. And most people don't do this. And so they wonder, they just think, oh, I need to get better at marketing. It's like, no, your offer needs to be better. Sometimes it's that. Sometimes they haven't articulated it well enough. And sometimes it's just like, oh, this is a generic offer. I've seen this a million times. There's nothing special about this. So why would I even if I see it as relevant, like, oh yeah, you're talking about an issue I struggle with. Well, you seem like a trustworthy person, but then I get to the value piece. And I'm like, but I don't see the value. And so this is something we really need to dig into, I think, uh, when we're creating our offers is how do we make our offers valuable? And to really understand, especially, I mean, you and I most, mostly work with service providers, but to really understand what is value for them how is that even defined? And there are some, especially for a service provider, there are very predictable things that constitute value. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you were mentioning um, that you had uh, read this book about the yeah. seven sort of factors for a good good offer, and you wanted to add a couple more too. Yeah, yeah. so this comes from Tom Pollan's book, uh, Leadsology, which is great. I mean, the whole book is worth it just for this. He calls it the value slider. So you know, people watching, I invite you to get a piece of paper and pen, and it's kind of a one through 10 slider, you could imagine. And so I'll go over the, uh, he had seven, but I, I'm, I'm adding a couple things to the end. So on the, uh, let's, let's imagine there's external and internal, external meaning how do they perceive it and experience it, and internal meaning how do we as the entrepreneur perceive and experience it. So the first, uh, slider is, I mean, he kind of goes into, in my mind, the four value, but is, is it irrelevant or relevant? So zero is irrelevant, 10 is relevant. So, you know, you're going through a painful divorce and somebody says, would you like a scented candle? <laughs> so, I don't know. It's like zero irrelevance. Like, what, what does this have to do with my divorce versus a weekend? Although it might bring some comfort. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So the one, it's a one out of 10. Um, but, you know, versus a weekend workshop called how to stop your painful divorce, even if it seems impossible. You know, that's a 10 out of relevance. That doesn't mean they'll buy, but it does mean they'll look at it and say that is speaking to my pain. So that's the, the first thing is to look at how, how much have we nailed the relevance? How much are we speaking to the problems they have, the results, you know, in the offer itself? Because um, it's not enough to just say, but my work could help them with, <laughs> it's like, great, but it has to be in the title. It has to be very clear and explicit. And, and by the way, I mean, it, it's not that the person selling a scented candle doesn't have a business. Obviously they do sure. because lots and lots and lots of other people would find the scented candle relevant. It's just, sure. you're talking to the wrong audience at that point. Right. Totally. Yeah. Um, right. For a, um, a spa, for example, scented candles might be they just go through hundreds of them a day or you know and so it's completely relevant there or you run meditation workshops or something and these candles are great um so yeah it's it, this is where of course we have to go back to the nation who are my people and is this relevant to them but of course if we're trying to appeal to everybody you can't get to relevance and so to me that it's dead in the water if you get like a zero on relevance it's just stop nothing else in this list is going to be that uh, helpful. But the second thing is a slider from that the offer, the results you're offering is really vague to it's very measurable. So vague to measurable. So vague would be, yeah, you know, um, you know, you're, you want to uh, get in shape and, uh, you know, by the end of this, I think you'll probably there'd be some, uh, some progress somewhere. Yeah, that's vague. Or 
oh yeah, you got allergies. Yeah, well, you know, when we do the work together, by the end there'll probably be, um, I don't know, you'll you'll notice some um, there'll be some changes of some kind. It's so is like what are you versus very measurable, measurable meaning you won't have allergies anymore. You're going to gain 25 pounds of muscle mass. You're going to double your profits. You're going to grow your, you're going to double your email list. You'll add a thousand people to your email list. Something very specific. Um, that could be uh, quantitatively, but it could also be qualitatively, but there's a very measurable result. You can, you can know when you've got it. It's interesting because the qualitative, I mean, a lot of the people that you and I work with do more or like holistic or spiritual um, transformations. And it's, it's not like they could say, you're going to be, you know, 2.5 times happier or something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right. But, 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 but maybe, I mean, because at the, at the start of your client, you know, during your client intake process, maybe you could do a, a, mm -hmm. a, a survey that says, Hey, on the scale of zero to 10, yeah. how happy are you right now before we start our work together? And then that person says, uh, I'm, a, I'm a four, you know? And then by the end of the work, three months, six months, a year, two years, whatever, um, you, you, do the, you do the client uh, exit survey, or at least, you know, touching in survey. And now they're from a four, and now they're at a seven or an eight. I mean, that's literally doubled. Their, <laughs> I mean, yeah. and if you see this again and again, right, then, then you literally could say, yeah, my, my client's average I mean, the happiness is kind of a weird metric, but sure. my clients average are, are, are like a doubling of their sense of well-being or something like that. Yeah, right. You could, I mean, there's a lot, we can get very creative about how we measure it. And the point is, because I know as I go through these, I can imagine people listening and, and saying, I can't do that and we shouldn't have to do that. I'm just saying all things being equal, what I'm giving as the 10 is more perceived as more valuable than a zero in each of these. Um, that there's just a certain real talk in this of if any of us had a hundred dollars to spend and one person gave us a very specific measurement we want and the other one said well we'll see we would choose the one that had the measurable all things being equal we would rather uh, a much more tangible uh, demonstrable result uh, and so it's just worth thinking in our in our offers is there a way I could make this result more measurable? Is there a way I could make this more um, clear for them? Here's the thing you're gonna get at the end of this. Again, so that they could know, because otherwise how will they know if it worked? You know, I, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And, and also I think having that kind of discipline uh, or, or sort of like um, structure, I guess, you know, it, it can help one focus one's work with the client. And, and you might discover that different clients maybe want different metrics. You know, one client says, yeah, I want the, the well-being scale. And okay. another client says, oh, I want the, um, you know, adventure. That's what I'm, you know, the scale, right? So, so it's interesting, like, to, to start asking yourself these questions as a service provider makes you go, yeah. well, what, what is, yeah, that it, it helps focus the work better. Yeah. And it may also help focus the work in that you realize, oh, some people want adventure. Some people want ease. And as a result, and I really prefer adventure. So that's what I'm going to offer. So you might decide, you know, and clients may come to you wanting all sorts of results. So part of it is what's the result you feel most passionate about offering and the result that you feel most competent in offering. And you can make a little, I do this with my clients all the time, a, a, a chart where it's up and down is how passionate are you side to side is how competent do you feel? And you can just take all the results that people might be craving or that you feel like you could offer and you plot them. Like, oh, this one's a two of passion, but it's a, you know, or, but it's a 10 of competence. And you st you know, of course you're looking for things that you're passionate about and competent in. But yeah, there is a certain amount of focus of, okay, I'm not going to promise every result. I'm going to pick a certain result and I'm going to, and then everything in the offer, of course, can be wrapped around that result. How do we get this person to this result that they most crave? And it should be a result that they are craving. It should be a result that they really, really, really want before they come to you. Not when you, we have to persuade them or what we think they need or any of that. But so that's the second one is vague to measurable. And then the next one is insignificant to significant. So insignificant, it would be like, 
you know, it's a, I'm going to help you gain muscle mass. And, and you say, well, that's a, that's a good result. It's fairly specific. And I say, yes. And that result is going to be, uh, you're going to gain about 0.1 pounds of muscle mass in the next year. Well, that's measurable. It's very measurable, but it's so like 0.1 pounds. Um, or if I said, yeah, we're going to help you, um, increase your bottom line of your corporation by yeah 1% over the next decade you know it's just it's very measurable but it's so undramatic and so that becomes a question too is like what's the more dramatic significant result uh, that they would look at and say wow you can help me get that for real okay i'll spend money cuz that's actually going to make a difference uh, in my life so not just measurable but significant Versus like, you're a little bit better, but it'll be hard to tell. I, I often joke, this is like what I hear from, this is the least compelling pitch that I hear from a lot of energy workers um, is, is this kind of, so uh, what happens to the energy? I don't touch, but you lie down on the table and then I, I say, ah, 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 and, and you may feel something, you may not feel something, um, uh, but uh, in the next couple of weeks, you'll notice, and then you might feel a lot better. If you do, I'll take the, the credit for that. Uh, and if you don't, then it's probably your shame and fear. And you should come back in for another session to work on that. You know, this is not great. Uh, significant. I'm going to leave and I just don't even notice. It's if people should notice. If people don't notice that there's been a result. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then. Well, 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 but there is something about how some things take time to integrate. Sure. Right. And so, and so I think it's, it is the service providers uh, responsibility uh, and opportunity uh, to notice what the typical process mm -hmm. is of, of transformation for a client and to be oh, say, yes, we have seen, you know, I've, I've typically seen that after this session, it takes clients, you know, three to seven days to integrate. Right. So do be on the lookout for cer these certain uh, situations or these certain ch changes within you, um, right? Something like that. Yeah. It's yeah, well, and that ties to the, the fourth one, which is slow results to faster results. All things being equal, people would prefer a faster result. Now, as you're saying, it's not always possible. Sometimes it takes time. And I think there's something here too, as we go through these, there are gonna be some, as people look at them, no matter how you try to wrangle it, it you're gonna get a low mark on it. You're not, you can't bump it up too much just by the nature of your work. So then if you can't fix it, you feature it. You know, you just make the case, here's why it's low. Here's why that may actually benefit you. Yes, this is slower, but here's why that's a benefit. And you frame it in that way. But yeah, all things being equal, people would rather have a faster result. Um, and so part of this, if we know that and we say, okay, people would rather get it quicker, we can start to say, well, is there a way I could expedite this process? You know, what's the 20% that makes 80% of the difference? If they want to gain muscle mass, I mean, there's a bunch of things we could do but what's the thing that would get the fastest results for them so they could really see it and you know, be encouraged by that. And okay, there's a bunch of stuff I had to be so good to have in there, but I'm just gonna cut it to streamline it, to focus it on just this result and anything that's extraneous to that, get rid of it, uh, which then could allow you to get the result much faster because you're not asking you know, so much homework for people. Uh, so that's, it's just something to consider. Could I make it faster? For them and again you may not be able to like one of the women in my uh, membership jan blake she's a storyteller from the uk really good storyteller and now it just takes a while to be a good storyteller it, it's there's there's not you could probably trim some time off but it may just take a while but certain offers you might be able to say okay being a great storyteller that could take decades but could I help somebody really learn one story and be able to tell it well in eight weeks? Yeah, I could do that. Give me eight That's weeks really with somebody cool. and I can get them to tell a story yeah. really, yeah. Or, or, or it could be like uh, in, in these eight weeks, you're gonna learn really, really well how to start a story and how to end a story. Beautiful. And it could oh. be any it could be any story you tell, but you'll you'll notice the the mark difference in how yeah. you start, which you know make make a vi making a video, how you start the video, how you, you know that kind of thing, right? Bingo, bingo, bingo. Yeah, you so right. You could pick one aspect of it, and then say, "I'm going to help you get this result specifically in a short period of time." Uh, 
so yeah, faster results people tend to be more excited about. And then uh, number five is low ROI to high ROI. So this just means, um, it's funny because people, of course, all things being equal, we'd rather pay less money, but the money is sometimes a red herring, the price, because if, if I looked at it and I said, man, if I spend $2,000 on this, you know, this is a lot of people's relationship with crypto. I mean, yeah, it's $2,000, but this could turn into $10,000 quickly. So yeah, it's $2,000. And normally I wouldn't just drop two grand on something, but if it could quintuple, you know, in the next month or something, I'm in. Uh, so, so, so much of our work, we need to be looking at, okay, what are the, what is this going to cost in terms of time, in terms of money, and how do I get them a return on investment where, uh, you know, as our colleague Danny Annie says, you know, the value is greater than the cost. How can you, you, um, structure things in such a way that that's true. So somebody says, you know, if somebody comes to my membership or to your membership or does our work and they say, well, okay, I pay this amount a month. But if that turns into, you know, a new client every month and those clients come back and spend time, they're making money. They're sailing on that. Um, you know, if you are a relationship coach and you you work with couples in crisis, you could sit them down and say, look, here, there's a few ways this can go. One is, I mean, you don't need to hire me, but you just don't hire anybody and you try to work it out yourself, but you can see how that's going there's a real likelihood that will end up in court. And that is going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars each, you know, like just look based on your income and all this, you know, you is going to cost this, you is going to cost this, there's lawyers fees, they're, you know, they're just going to try to get as much money from you as possible. Or, and so this could cost you $200,000. Or you could spend $2,000 with me to do this package to work out the stuff. So then people start to see, wait a second, that's a better return on investment. I'm going to be saving money, saving time, saving energy. And the more we can help demonstrate that, and not just demonstrate, but it's got to be true. We got to be thinking, can I really give a return uh, that is in some ways, again, tangible, measurable, uh, demonstrable? Uh, yeah, so there's that one as well. And this is a bit of a tricky one because imagine imagining that energy worker again, um, you know, and how can... Okay, so, so let me ask you, so it's not that we have to be, we have to use every one of these measures, um, but I like that you said these measures, if you are able to use them or improve upon them, it obviously strengthens your offer and makes it much more interesting to, to a typical yeah. you know, buyer. Um, but, but well, with yeah. the energy work, I would yes. just say so often they have no niche. Right. They've never thought about a problem they're solving. They're freestyling every session. It's like, well, it's the best part. This energy works, help everyone, everything. And if they were instead to say, I'm going to do energy work for this particular issue, um, for example, is one way of focusing. Then it's like, okay, I'm going to help people get this result. And then the energy work, may, let's say it's uh, arthritis. And it's like, yeah, okay, this energy work really does help. But there are also certain dietary things there's a whole protocol I could put together and they spend the next year, they read 20 books on arthritis. They just get everybody's opinions and they put together their own philosophy around it. And they come up with an offer, a program that helps people with this of which the energy work is a significant part, but they also create meditations and visualizations for their clients on arthritis that are just targeted for, you know, you're noticing some aching in your body, bring your attention to the aching and, you know, and imagine visualize this and this and this, um, you know, and they give them a, a grocery list of things to buy and the Epsom salts and the et cetera. This is now uh, a bigger return on investment. And sometimes a return on investment, the saving of time is I've done all the research for you. You don't have to, you know, go on YouTube and spend a hundred hours trying to, I did that. Here's what I've come up with. And here's the testimonials from people of, oh my God, I actually got better. Because if people don't get better, what are you doing? If nobody's getting better in a way that they really notice, and your response to that is to shame them for, for not, you know, for being too fearful or whatever, this is just ir irresponsible in, in my view. If people don't get a result from working with us, um, and, and then, it's yeah. and it's and, and you know it's also uh, I think all of this helps the service provider feel much more on purpose too. Like, wow, I'm really contributing 
to others, like to be able to see that happen. Oh, I mean, all of this is very sort of tangible transformations that we can see in clients um, and therefore shaping our offer to be focused on that. And I think that um, this is really, I mean, if we apply this, it becomes um, everyone benefits. I think so. Yeah, I agree. And it does make us better at what we do. It does, because when you have a result you're aiming for, you got something to aim for now. And, and so again, that could be a tangible or less tangible result, but there's still some, gotta be something we're aiming at, I would think. Um, and okay, so that's low ROI uh, or high ROI. The next one, number six, is more complex to implement and simpler to implement. So again, all things being equal, people would rather something that's really easy to implement. Because if I said, look, I can help you um, make the most beautiful garden in the world. Now, here's what you've got to do. On the first full moon of the year, you're going to have to strip off half of your clothes, but lengthwise, not widthwise. You're going to need to tailor some clothes for this. Now, they're going to have to be organic cotton, half of them, but the other half will have to be organic wool. The wool part, you will uh, bury in the ground separately, and then you will say a different part, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... If there's a million steps. There are certain clips in this that is going to be gold <laughs> to just clip out. It's awesome. So yeah, it's too, it's too, it's not too much. It's just most people will be overwhelmed and that's unappealing to people versus, of course, the, the ultimate extension of this is you wave the magic wand, it happens, you take a pill, it happens, you know, which, which isn't possible or necessarily desirable. But it's just saying the closer we can get to that, the more people will want it. And that doesn't preclude having the tough conversation with the clients that this takes time, this takes effort, it's hard. That is very credibility building. It's just out of mercy for them and, and mercy for our own marketing and not making our marketing work too hard. Again, you go back to it and you think, okay, do I need to include all these steps? Are there steps I could remove and the world wouldn't fall apart because they didn't do that thing that I think is really cool? Could I just streamline this? to the 80 20 thing so that it's simpler and and also part of the thing with the simplicity which is helpful in terms of the word of mouth like i was looking for um, an accountant a bookkeeper years ago and man that was a marketing education because i went to the websites and they're terrible they're terrible they don't have the prices they don't have the process there's no photo there's no bio i don't know anything about no videos it's so and then i went to this one called origami accounting i think that's ca and at the time, they just had this little cartoon on the front. And it was four panels, and these were the panels as I remember them. First one is, it was like a cartoon figure. It's like, take all your receipts. No, first of all, we send you 12 envelopes, one for every month, like a FedEx envelopes. Then you throw your receipts, panel two, in the envelopes. Uh, panel three, you send us the envelope. Panel four, it's all done. And it was like, and it was set price. It was a fixed price, 150 a month. It didn't work for me because I have so many sources of income, which was a bummer. But for people who just have one source of income, they can do that. But I just thought, God bless you, kind saints. It was such a relief just to look at it. Of, I understand this. This is so simple. And here I am. I bet you it's, I bet you it's a decade since I've seen that. And I can still remember all the steps. It was so simple. That's so brilliant. I mean, yeah, the, the, the ability to be able to, to show your client Step A, B, C, yeah. D equals this result. You know, it's it's amazing. Thank you for that. Yeah, and better that. better for um, word of mouth because then they can talk about it. Here I am a decade later, remembering the name, remembering the cartoon, being out, and I've told that to so many people in so many workshops. So if it's too complicated, they won't even try to talk about it. I mean, this is the same. I do close up magic, you know, uh, card tricks, coin tricks, and stuff. And if I do you see some magic tricks and it's just like too complicated. First I picked a card and then I signed the card and then he tore the card up and then the card turned into a bird. And then the bird laid an egg. And in that egg was a ring from this previous trick. And then a person put on the ring and then they vanished. And, but then they reappeared with the card signed and they're, you know, it's just, you can't, and they, they remember it wrong and all this, but it's better to say like, um, you know, I saw this, you know, magician and he did this trick where he, let's try to see if I have anything. It's like, you know, he had, um, he had like a little bit of dirt in his hand and he closed his hand. And then when he opened it up, it was all gone. It's just simple. That's really That's good, a, man. 
that's thank you. It's, it's just a very simple trick, easy to remember, and then therefore easy to tell people about. So all things being equal, you know, it's, it goes back to the confused mind says no. If people are confused, they'll say no. And so it's funny, it's both for the implementing of it, of course, it makes it easier on both of us if it's simple, but for the marketing of it, the explaining of it, because if somebody says, wow, what you're saying is relevant. Oh, that's a really dramatic result. I, well, how do you do that? <laughs> you try to lay it out in this million steps. You just, you'll see their eyes cross. They lean back. They start to feel overwhelmed. Uh, you know, I should talk to my wife about this. I'll get back to you rather than, um, I get it. That makes total sense. You know, wow. and, and, and it's, it's not necessarily that we have to take away some steps that are, that we think are important, but might confuse oh. them. And so we're afraid. It's, it's just that you can, you can chunk the steps larger that's also and true. frame it in a way that's understandable to the potential client. So, so in, in that yeah. example of the accounting, um, the four panels, yeah. it's, there's, a, there's a ton going on behind the scenes. You know, it's like once they receive the envelopes back from you with the receipts, they have to do a bunch of stuff that they're not telling you that they're doing. Oh, totally. And right? also, we can, that's what a good workbook is. I mean, you know, Carrie Klassen, she did a few workbooks. Yeah. She's redoing them, I guess they're not up, but she had one called uh, How to Write a Lovable Homepage. And it was the best ebook I've ever seen about how to write, but it was so easy. It was just, you know, do this exercise, take the answers, fill in the blanks, step by step by step. And so, one little workbook, that's one chunk. And you just fill out the workbook and there's your homepage. You know, it's so simple to do. It's so simple. And so we can do, it's the difference between also uh, Mark Silver just today, I think he did his um, business model training, uh, day long thing. But imagine if you got there and he's like, okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a, like a spreadsheet for your business to figure out the business model. So I'll give you 10 minutes to do that. You can, people would just collapse. But instead, he says, okay, here's a link, go to it. Here's the spreadsheet. I've already done it. You just plug in the numbers. Simple. That's so simple to do. You know, and it's people will weep tears of relief when, when you give them something simple because they've tried and it's so hard and it's overwhelming and so complicated, it seems. And if you can take the complexity out of it, it's, it's like, yeah, I've tried that, but this, no, 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 no. Just fill in this spreadsheet here. And boom, see the result? Did that just happen? Oh my, you know, it's genuine. I mean, genuine tears. People would just like out of the stress they've been carrying around this thing for so long. Yeah, that's that's really, really good. Um, I, as, as you're talking through these, I'm also thinking about my own offers. Like, okay, I'm gonna have to, <laughs> have to start making, making some imp improvements. Uh, but I think that's probably true for, for everyone. Um, oh, yeah, another... What, Another yeah. example of this I want to share is with my membership. So in my membership, I've got like 200 topics. There's probably about 2000 different pieces of content. It's just, it's insane. And so that's complicated and overwhelming. And the, the biggest uh, complaint or frustration or the hardest part, people are like, it's great. There's so much content, but it's overwhelming. So I don't know where to start. To join the club. I think, I think we need to start a club of uh, teachers right. who overgive. Um, and right. and it's, uh, it's, prob it's going to be a huge club. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's, but it's part of what I'm starting to do is I'm creating like a, a really in-depth choose your own adventure quiz where it dendritically branches off in a kind of mind map fashion. So it takes them where they want to go just to make it simpler for them. So that if they ever say I'm stuck, I don't know what to do next. No problem. Just go to this, uh, the meantime guide or membership guide, and you just start here and it'll walk you through it. So instead of them having to search through, grab the machete and hack through the underbrush of my membership, I've already got like a 1.0 version up, but I know it'll keep getting better. And ideally it'll be the kind of thing where it's like, oh great, that gives me a next step. And I just had to go to this one link and do this thing instead of scroll through 200 um, uh, topics, which technically, well, it's the same thing. You'd end up in one of these 200 places but it's all at once versus here's a question. Great. Here's a question. Answer it. Great. Here's none. And just at the end, there's the result. So how can we make it easier or simpler for them? And, and the next one is harder to, sim hard, uh, harder to easier. So it's connected to this, but it's just, you know, if I said, yeah, you want to put on muscle? Well, what you got to do? And then I describe some insane, it's not complicated, but it's insanely hard. 
you know, just you're going to have to lift a uh, thousand pounds, you know, 10 times a day. And then you're going to need to do a million squats and you're going to need to. And it's like, well, simple enough, but that's overwhelmingly difficult. I can't imagine exerting. And so, you know, this is where like the high intensity interval training has its appeal because the pitch is, look, if you do intermittent fasting plus high in uh, interval, you work up for 20 minutes and you get the same results as three hours in the gym. And people say, hello, I'm in. So if you can find a way that is genuinely easier to get the same result, uh, that doesn't take the years of time, the physical effort, the financial effort, it's just easier. Of course, people would prefer that. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. And it reminds me of, well, the whole stair step idea. It's like, if it is, it is helpful to give clients the steps, right? Like we talk about simplify it, but if one from one step to the next, it's like this giant leap, <laughs> then it's step yeah. one giant leap to step two. Maybe there's only three steps, but each step is like two, three giant leaps. It's impossible for most people. Yeah. Uh, and the next one is connected to the, it's uh, maybe I should put it next to it, but is, is because there's harder to implement and simpler to implement, but there's also harder to understand and simpler to understand, which it just, I would just make a distinction that it's, if you, if it's difficult to explain it, they probably won't buy it if they can't get it in a simple fashion, so how hard is it for people to understand what you do? And so this is, I mean, you and I deal with this. This is probably one of the most common questions you and I get is how do I articulate what I do? Because I go to articulate it and I get the response of, well, that's, that's neat. That's cool. I mean, cool stuff you do. But hey, good to meet you. I'm gonna go back to my friends. You know, you're at the party and just nobody's, nobody, you can tell they don't get it. It's not landing because the way you're describing it and maybe the way you've structured it is harder to understand. Because if you say, yeah, I've got a weekend workshop coming up and it's, um, oh, it's just so powerful. It's a mix of uh, the work that reconnects, the work of Byron Katie, some nonviolent communication, and then there's some theta healing, uh, it's a gong bath, some cacao ceremony, all that. There's a certain point people lose track of all the things. And it's just like new agey woo woo stuff is happening. Got it. And then they're either into that or they're not. And it, but it's confusing. It's difficult to understand what is happening versus if you say, yeah, we got a weekend workshop coming up and it's for, you know how sometimes um, there's a divorce and the father's, um, there's just bitterness. And there's a lot of dads who just maybe feel bitter in the court system and all this. It's a workshop for men to help them kind of heal from this in such a way that they're in a place to actually create a better relationship with their ex than they've ever had, even when they were together, uh, and, and just to heal all the wounds that are there. And that's what we're doing, is working on the tools and the inner work and seeing where they're carrying responsibility and guilt and shame. I'd be like, okay, I kind of get it. I get what it is. So harder to understand, simpler to understand. If it's simpler to understand, people are gonna lean in. If it's harder to understand, I need to think about it. Let me get back to you. Um, and they probably won't. And then the last one, this is one I added, is a scale from, this may seem uh, the opposite of everything I've just said, but it's the scale on the one, on the low end is like, that's too good to be true. And then the 10 is that could work. Because if we trigger the, oh, that's too good to be true, the kind of height, um, that's, it's no good. I mean, I suppose it's like that couldn't work to that could work uh, as a spectrum, but too good to be true triggers that that probably won't work. It's unbelievable. There's no credibility to it. And um, so all things being equal, they would rather have something that's like, because that's what it, it should be. After we talk to them or they look at our marketing, there's a clear result. And when they hear the approach, it's simple to understand. They think, that could work. When I saw the four envelopes thing, I was like, that works. That's amazing. I totally get it. So they, they should have some trust in the process itself. So those are the nine things that I think people are looking at. And it's worth doing this on a piece of paper and taking like any one offer that you have and just sitting down and, and ranking it. And also if you're in a membership like George's or, or mine, or, or you've got colleagues and friends, 
you could sit down and say, look, I want to explain my offer. I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to talk, you ask me anything you want. And then I'd like you to fill this out. I'll explain what these all are, but you just give me your honesty. We did this with Jan uh, Blake and the membership and it was really revealing. I said, okay, tell us a bit about it. And on one level, we didn't have enough information, but on another level, that's perfect because that's how it often is. And people rank certain things really low, certain things really high. And so it was just, you started to see, oh, this is where my offer is weak. Can I do anything about this to bump it up one or two? Or you know, what would it take for this to be a 10? Could it be a 10? It gives you a direction in improving instead of just how do I make my offers better? It's how do I improve this narrow slice of it? Right. Um, it's, it's, it's brilliant. And it's a journey. You know, I, I just want to encourage everyone. Like, it's not that if you're not at a 10 or a 7 totally. on many of these that somehow your offer is a failure because some offers um, are, are able to get clients and, and sales at, you know, even though it's a two or three on, on many of these things. I mean, who knows? So, um, but yes, if we can gradually over time, step yeah. by step, bit by bit, just say, all right, let me, let me try improving this slider a little bit, you know, this month or this quarter, it's just going to get better over, over the years. Yeah. yeah. And every, every once in a while, you may just sit down and take an offer and say, okay, time to retool this. Uh, and you just really go to town. You do a little charrette, a brainstorm with some colleagues, and you just think, how do I make this a much more compelling offer? Because if, I mean, I, I agree. I think for most, you'll never hit a 10 on everything, just the nature of some offers. But if you if you were like a seven consistently or an eight all the way down, um, you wouldn't have to market as hard. The, the offer really would market itself. The word of mouth would be better. It'd be easier to write sales that are easier to describe it, et cetera. And then there's the four uh, internal things. And I think these are also important because um, if, you know, it, the first part is, is the offer attractive to them? And um, those nine things at the 10 level, that's in my mind where they consider attractive. But then there's also, is it attractive to us? And this gets left out and it kills a lot of businesses. The four ones to me are, is it from simple to offer? from overwhelmingly complex to offer. Because, you know, I think all of us have had programs where it's like, oh my God, there's so many moving parts. Oh, I just finished the call. Now I got to write up a, a follow-up email and I've got to send notes to every single person I coached in there. And then I've got to, oh, you know, it's, and I'm doing 30 classes every month and I personally, and it just gets so overwhelming. So if it's um, simple to offer, you're more likely to offer it. You know, I, I love what you said here because uh, I, I often tell clients, listen, um, try leaning back a little bit more in your work with clients, like metaphorically speaking, like you don't always have to be leading their transformation. Really, ide ideally, they're leading their, tra their own transformation and using you as a, as a coach and consultant or healer or whatever, but that they're in charge and that they're like, like I, I, I make my clients write, write up their own summary. I mean, they don't have to. But it's like the follow up email says, hey, what was one takeaway and what's one thing you want to oh, yeah. uh, do by the next time we meet again? It's like it's like my, 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 my client calls are like I take five minutes to prep and then I, and there's no follow up work. Yep. And yet yeah, they really that. enjoy it. It's like it's like we all we all can. They're all there. There is an offer that for each of us where it can be that easy. That's my opinion. Well, that's been my puttering sessions. You know, I just I answer and I tell people I won't look at my laptop I'm not looking at your website I'm not reading anything you send me in advance there's no follow-up we're just talking for an hour and I tidy or I go for a walk simple it's really easy um, but yeah so it's it, simple for us is a big deal then the next one is is it how sustainable is it you know sort of the zero on the side is burned out and the other side is it's sustainable in terms of time, energy, and money. And looking at any offer that's worth paying attention to. Because sometimes I see people doing an offer, and even just financially, it's like, oh, yeah, you're losing money doing this. Are you nuts? Because they haven't factored in all the costs. Yeah, you're doing a live retreat, but you, you got to pay the venue. You're paying the caterer. Did you notice that you have to pay for gas and for your car or you rent a car? And then you've got the shuttle bus. And then, you, you know, when we add all this up, oh, no, you're paying your assistant, were you paying them to help with this? And your time, 
it's just they, they lose I, money. I, I've actually done that with, with retreats myself when I used to lead them uh, a, a decade ago. So yes, I can raise my hand on that. Yeah. So that's an important thing for an offer is just how sustainable is it? Can you keep it going? Uh, the third one is from unfulfilling to you know deeply satisfying. And there's certain kinds of offers that it's like, I don't like working with these people. This isn't meaningful for me. And of course, that isn't going to last. And the last one is, is it, it kind of from like, is it a one-time offer or is it something you can do regularly, like weekly, monthly, annually, et cetera? Because I have, I mean, four things I do, one, three, 30 day events I do once a year and I just repeat them. And I got to, oh man, because I've just started today. I just did my first call for the Marketing for Hippies 101 30 day. It's so nice to go into the notes from last year and like, oh yeah, here's the outline. And then, oh, I got to change this and this and this. And I went into the kind of like a orientation page for that week. And oh, I got to make a bunch of changes. But I know every year I do it, it's less changes. I just, in the meantime, I've done uh, 11 years now. And it's just, it's the minorest, smallest tinkerings. And I just get to show up and enjoy it rather than the whole work of redeveloping a curriculum, rewriting a sales page, redeveloping a whole sales strategy. So, you know, if you have an offer that is simple for you, it's sustainable for you, it is uh, satisfying for you, and it's also something that you can repeat, to me, that's a winner. And if you have it, so then that to me is attractive to me. And if then it's also attractive to them, everything gets easier in the marketing. We don't have to um, bang our head around the, the sales copy quite as hard. We don't have to, um, you know, try to bribe people as much, you know, to spread the word. There is, it's just everything starts to happen. Uh, it's a, it becomes a lot smoother. So those are the nine things for the external, the four things for the internal. I'll probably add more. I'd love to, you know, I'm sure you have thoughts too, of things to add, but. This is, no, it's, this is amazing. And, and a lot of food for thought for myself too. I'm going to make sure um, all my clients watch this. And uh, no, this is, this is awesome. Uh, the, the only thing I'll, I'll say is that um, uh, I've been, I've been kind of lazy about offers for, for quite some time. Because I, I've been kind of, um, uh, I, I've been kind of taking this like alternative path strategy, which which is not necessarily easy for, for a lot of people, or at least it takes time. Which is just the whole idea of the whole the whole uh, true fan strategy, right? Like yeah, like yeah. if you, which actually I think you have a bunch of true fans. Like if you show up often enough with caring content, um, and you almost become like a household name for them you can sell almost anything um, that you really believe in uh, hopefully matches some of the uh, at least the internal characteristics if not the external one and you'll still get some sales um, and yes now if we can move the sliders over towards the 10 it amplifies it way more um, and so anyway i just <laughs> wanted to well, yeah yeah i hear you because it's part of it is especially these things are particularly useful when you're starting out, I think. Um, you know, as we develop and we get a reputation, it is easier, you know, sometimes I've said to people, they say, well, what can I offer as value for this weekend workshop? The value is they get to hang out with you for a weekend. That's really what they want. You know, it's like with Steven Jenkinson, I study with him. I don't give the shit what he calls it. If he was coming to Alberta and he did an event, I wouldn't even look at this. I wouldn't even know the name of it. I just, he's coming. Where is he going to be? And I show up I'm like whatever yeah. he wants to talk about. I just, right. so that takes time to build. Yeah. Um, and once you've got that reputation and as long as you know, you can deliver, you don't need to put as much effort and bells and whistles and you know, all this, but in the beginning where they don't know your name, chances are they're not glad you came. What do you do? How do you, you know, get them to say yes at all. You know, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, the more you need clients sooner, the more you need to pay attention to these sliders. Whereas if you are in a lucky position like Stephen Jenkinson or, yeah. or, 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 or yeah. to some extent, the, you know, the two of yeah. us, um, we can be much, we can be way more relaxed about oh, right. the offers and still get enough sales. But and, for and, most and of the, the people watching this, 
Right. Yeah, and the marketing. Like when I first went to Toronto doing workshops, oh man, dozens of personal emails to hubs. I would host parties and bring people together. I would do so many intro workshops. Now I got a day long workshop. I don't do the weekend one. I just do a day long workshop. It's pay what you can. I, show, I send a few emails. I put up a post. I tag a bunch of people in Toronto. It takes me about an hour and that's it. I do maybe a Facebook ad or two, but it's not very much. I really don't do a lot. And it's I, if I did all that, would it work better? Yeah. Sure, but sure. I, I'm, I've got other things to do. And just to bring it back to the fact that these sliders help the service provider focus their work. And so it's like, it's, it's the ability to cut out all the other possibilities that they could work on and go, ooh, this, if I can get this result for people, that would be really satisfying. And it would be, it would spread, you know, the word would spread much more easily. But um, Tad, this has been awesome. And I wanna make sure people know about your membership um, because you, you, know, you offer uh, so much generosity and, and help and support in there. So, um, and the fact that you now have a choose your own adventure thing is yeah, yeah. super helpful. Um, there are people that I know in the membership who are loving it. And okay, so, so maybe you could give us a, a quick, like, and, and there are multiple tiers to the membership too, right? So like, like, tell us about who should join the membership, what they will get from it, basically, and what are the options there? The, well, I mean, it has the same as you, I think. People should join and people who hear what I have to say, who really like it, who want to work with me and dig into my material more in depth. I suppose that's the, the, the target market in question. Uh, the, how much, um, how much uh, access do they get to your, what, what's the amount of you know, live things you do in the membership? I do a weekly call for the pro members. That's 100 US a month. And uh, then I do two monthly calls, but there's a bunch of other ones. I do every once a quarter, I do a three hour deep dive into point of view marketing. Once a month, I do a target market review. So there's quite a few. And then uh, four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there are community led calls. I'm not at them, but they dig into different aspects and give people a chance to connect with each other. Uh, so there's that. And then, you know, all my eBooks are there, my videos, my uh, everything. And I'm trying to get as organized as possible. But if people just want to, get a bigger sense of what I do. If you just go to marketingforhippies.com, there's a starter kit and there's a ton of free stuff there that will you know, ease you into it if you're, if you're curious. And George, by the way, I also sent you a copy, the link to that article I did about the value slider um, and a link to the membership page awesome. so you can see it. But uh, feel yeah. free to share this article that I wrote with your members because I've written up sort of a description of what each of them are, the levels and it may help. Excellent, I look forward to Look forward to, uh, to sharing that. Tad, thank you so much for the work you do. Um, this was awesome, really helpful. Like I said, I'm gonna make sure as many people see this as possible because I think this is gonna help everyone, including myself. So um, awesome, anything else you wanna say last final, You know, um, any up, uh, other upcoming events or offers or anything? I don't think so. No, okay, that's, okay. that's, that's a good so place to, to complete then. All right, thanks, Tad. Take care, George.